Please welcome back to the stage, California Youth of the Year, Yossi Rojas. Good, good afternoon, everyone, or evening. Um, I'm, I, I was a member of the Boys and Girls Club, and um, just like thousands and, and millions of other kids across the nation, what the Boys and Girls Club provided me with was, was an opportunity. And that opportunity came to me in the shape of an uh, indoor soccer league. See, my whole life, I had never been able to participate in a team due to my family's financial circumstances. And what the club did for me was it provided me with an affordable soccer league. And I still vividly remember walking in the Boys and Girls Club gym for the very first time and thinking I had walked into a professional soccer stadium. It was that experience that consolidated my love for the club and led me to realize that Great Future Start Here was not just a slogan, but a reality. And it was from that point on that I became involved in anything the club had to offer, public speaking programs, leadership programs, um, healthy lifestyle living programs. And it was all these programs that allowed me to realize the true extent of my capabilities that a boy who wants to know English growing up now had the opportunity to go across the nation and, and, and speak at conferences, that a boy who once slept in a closet due to financial circumstances had the opportunity to meet the President of the United States, Barack Obama, and, and, and today, President Bill Clinton, that a boy who by statistics definition was likely to fail was finally put on a path for success. So for these reasons and many more, I, I am a product of my Boys and Girls Club. And the most amazing thing is that this all stemmed from an indoor soccer league and my involvement in athletics at the club. And it, it helped me lead a healthy lifestyle and has led me to live a pretty amazing life up until now. So I'm extremely appreciative for everything the Boys and Girls Club has done and, um, and for everything that indoor soccer league started. Um, and, and now I'd like to invite to the stage Howell Wexler, CEO of the Alliance for a Healthier Generation. Rika Rodman, Executive Director of the Wasserman Foundation. <laughs> Ty Magnor, Professional American Cyclist. Eddie Wall, Professional Snowboarder. Danielle Wolf, U.S. Female Boxer. Kevin McCartney, Senior Vice President of Boys and Girls Clubs of America. And now it is my great honor to welcome back to the stage President Bill Clinton. Did you tell me about what he told you? Uh, no, I didn't. You know all those things he told you about himself? He neglected to tell you that he also is the valedictorian of his high school class at Vanderport. So let's hear it for I am very proud of Yossi. I thank him for being here and for the example he has set. Most of you in this audience probably already know that the Alliance for a Healthier Generation is an organization our foundation started, I think, in 2006 with the American Heart Association to help combat childhood obesity. Most of our work has been focused in schools. We now are thanks to uh, the support of the Robert Wood Johnson Foundation, working in 20,000 American schools in all 50 states to increase access to healthier foods and more opportunities for good exercise for students, teachers, and staff. But we have come increasingly to recognize that to deal with this epidemic successfully, we have to look at where kids live and study and play outside of school. We succeeded in reducing the calories shipped to schools and soft drinks by 90%. We made agreements with the major providers of school meals that dramatically improved their nutritional content and reduced their caloric content. And that was the basis of these new food standards that the Agriculture Department has now given to every school in America. But to really combat the epidemic, we got to deal with the kids in the after-school areas. So today, all these folks are here to help us to announce a major step forward. 
Many of our children, for example, who are low income, get their breakfast, dinner, and snacks from out of school time big providers to ensure that they're getting the most nutritious food possible with the money they've got. We are today proud that the nation's largest food manufacturers, including Advanced Pierre, Asian Food Solutions, Bake Crafters, ES Foods, Highliner, JTM, McCain, Riches, Tasty Brands, Trident, and Tyson, all will sell their healthier products at prices no higher than less healthy, comparable products to out-of-school time providers. <laughs> Three of the largest group purchasing organizations in America, HPS, Premier, and Summa Provista, will offer products for purchase that meet our alliance's nutritional guidelines, saving the providers 10 to 20 percent in food and beverage purchase costs. So you may wonder, will these providers really utilize the opportunity to buy healthier products, increase physical activity? I can say there is one organization committed to leading the way. I am proud to say, because I am a former member, that the Boys and Girls Club of America is already working with our alliance to ensure that there are 4,000 clubs throughout America and then their affiliated youth centers on U.S. military installations all over the world create a culture of wellness to sustain healthier environments for young people most in need. That means nearly four million young people will have access to healthier foods and physical activity every single day. The Boys and Girls Club of America is represented here today, as you'll see in a moment. We are also working with hundreds of other out-of-school time providers to ensure that they give the same opportunities to millions more young people. And finally, to ensure that we're inspiring the next generation to stay healthy, I'm very grateful to my friend and former staff member in the White House, Rika Rodman, Executive Director of the Wasserman Foundation, and these amazing athletes who are here who have joined us because they represent well-known sports figures in our nation who will lend their voices to promote participation in this healthy out-of-school time effort. They will encourage young people to make healthier choices. And I think we can all be excited. I wish I had been a snowboater or a cycler, and I do not want to have a fight with Ms. Wolf. <laughs> This is all very exciting. You heard from the previous panel that role models matter. You heard what Montel Williams said would happen if we could change every reality TV show to have some message that was geared toward healthy eating or exercise. So this is a good day. This conference tries to highlight the importance of public and private partnerships to create real solutions for the nation's health. And this brings together some pretty powerful partners from multiple sectors. It's the ideal model of what seems to me to be just about the only thing that is working anywhere in our contentious world. When people get together with others outside their sphere of activity and find something they can agree on and go and do it, good things happen. So I urge all of you in this room to think about that. What can we do? to help children in their out-of-school areas when they're off the school ground and beyond the reach of either the new nutritional guidelines, the commitments of the soft drink companies to get rid of all full sugar drinks, for example, in schools, and the opportunities for exercise they might have there. This is a great start, but we need your continued support. Now I'd like to ask Kevin McCartney, the Senior Vice President of Government Relations at the Boys and Girls Club, to tell you how they are going to lead the charge to build a healthier generation. Kevin. Thank you, Mr. President, you. Thank you, Mr. President and uh, thank you, uh, Hal, for your great work. It's really an honor and a pleasure to be here today on behalf of Boys and Girls Clubs of America to announce this this wonderful partnership. As the president mentioned, we have 
over 4,000 clubs throughout the country serving over 4 million kids. And these 4,000 clubs are in the areas of most high need, high risk, including over 200 in Native American land on military bases really throughout the world in inner cities and in rural America. If you heard the panel earlier today, it's all about zip codes. We're in the zip codes where the kids need us the most. And this partnership today is really going to highlight what we need, and that's the help. The help, the tools, the resources to reach out to our kids. Um, our wonderful staff and volunteers are doing tr a tremendous job, but we need more tools, more resources. The partnership with the Alliance does just that. And as the president said, we need everybody. We need everybody in this room uh, to really make a commitment, not just boys and girls clubs, but all the after school programs. We do so much in school, but there's so much that we can do out of school. We serve over 25 million meals a year to these kids, and we need to do more, and it needs to be healthier. The Native American programs that I mentioned, the 200, we have about a million dollars that we get from the federal government to combat the diabetes program that NOTA talked about. A million dollars isn't getting it done. We need more. We need public-private partnerships. We need the folks in this room. That's why it's an honor and a pleasure to be here, to form this partnership, to do more, to help our kids. We know kids need to be healthy to succeed. We all need to be healthy to succeed. This is a huge step forward, and I want to thank you. I want to thank the Alliance. And Mr. President, I want to thank you for your tremendous commitment to the young people of this country. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, before, thanks, Kevin. But before all these folks leave, I, I, I just want to emphasize something because I care a lot about not just the health, but we, we've got to do something about this diabetes problem. When I left the White House, the Diabetes Association was very good to me. I, I discovered that 25% of our Medicaid expenses for medical care for low-income people, even in 2000, was already directly tied to the rise of diabetes in America. But the kind of diabetes you get from living, that is by what you eat or don't, what, how you exercise or don't, was still called adult onset diabetes. Three or four years ago, I can't remember exactly what year, the, the medical society and the diabetes association said, you can no longer call type two diabetes adult onset diabetes. I remember well after we started this project when we had a nine-year-old girl who lived about a mile from my office in Harlem diagnosed with type two diabetes. And then within three months, there was a nine-year-old girl in Washington, D.C., diagnosed with type 2 diabetes. So let me just say a couple of things to try to emphasize what Kevin just said. If you can help institute these programs on any Native American reservations where they do not exist, you should do that. You should do it for two reasons. First of all, the poorest Americans are still the Native Americans who live on reservations that do not have gambling revenue. Secondly, given a constant diet and exercise, that is across all ethnic groups, Native Americans are twice as likely to develop diabetes as European Americans. African Americans, 1.8 times as likely. Second poorest part of America is the Mississippi Delta. Latino Americans, Hispanic Americans, 1.5 times as likely for purely genetic reasons. So this effort to impact after school, which we're going to try to integrate, obviously, into what we're doing for non-young people in our wellness initiative, which all of you are a part of, here in the Coachella Valley and in Houston and Little Rock and Jacksonville, where we're working, and any other place we expand, one of the things we're looking at is whether we should go to South Texas because there's this huge diabetes problem there. So I ask all of you to think about this. They, they're standing up here and this is a happy day and 
This may look like a walk in the park. This is a really difficult challenge we are undertaking. What these food companies have done is a big deal because I have heard ever since we started this project until I was blue in the face that good food is more expensive than direct. So if you don't have any money and you don't have any disposable income and you're trying to take care of your kids and they're hungry all the time, you buy stuff that's high in bulk and caloric content, even if it's low in nutritional value. So this is a very, very important announcement. But it will not amount to a hill of beans unless people buy the food and kids consume the food and do so as a part of a healthy living program. So you should give them a big hand. And while you're clapping, you should think about what you can do to support them. Thank you very much. And I, I think I, I had a lot of fun with them, but I think we ought to give a special thanks to Ty, Danielle, and Eddie, our athletes, because, you know, they could be doing something else. And I bet sometimes it must be hard for them to imagine. They spend hours a day training as a way of life, and they're willing to try to convince millions of young people that they could at least take a 30-minute walk. <laughs> and they don't do this for a living like I do. So give them a big hand, and thank you all.